All right, so hopefully there's not too much background noise, but I mean, what can you do? All right, so here's the problem we're looking at. And so basically, um, what we're looking for in this problem is we're looking for an example where, um, so with something like Fubini's theorem, what you wanna think about is if you weaken some of the conditions, does the theorem fail and how does it fail? Um, and so here's an example of a case where um, you, so you need the function to be integrable in order to apply Fubini's theorem. But if the function isn't integrable, then you don't know what happens. So what could possibly happen? Well, here's an example where um, Fubini's theorem seems to work because integrating an x, because you're able to integrate both in x and in y, and integrate in y and then x, and you get the same thing. Um, so it looks like Fubini's theorem should apply. However, the function isn't integrable, um, so it's not equal to the integral of the function because the integral of the function doesn't exist. So this is just like an example of how Fubini's theorem can fail. And so, yeah, this is um, just an example of that. So um, that's what they're trying to show here. So C is the problem. Um, the set in problem 1-17. So C is a subset of 0, 1 cross 0, 1 is a set such that each horizontal and vertical here. I'm going to um, I'm going to call this 0, 1 cross 0, 1, A. So let's say each horizontal and vertical line in A contains at most one point of C. And the other thing we know is that the boundary of C needs to be all of A. All right. Um, so the boundary of C being all of A and A, um, so what we immediately have is that um, the, me the boundary of A does not have measure zero, the boundary of C does not have measure zero um, because it's a, um, because it's a, it's a, it's a rectangle with, um, with um, l length and height. So it can't have measures zero or, so it can't have measure zero. Um, so this means that the indicator function on C is not integrable. And so the integral over A of chi C does not exist. So that's the last part of the problem that we want to prove but I just did it first because it's just so straightforward. All right, um, so now what we want to do is we want to compute these two integrals up here. All right, so the first one that we want to do is the integral of the integral of chi c dx dy. So what we're doing is we're going to fix a y, and for each y, we have this integral in x. So for any y in 0, 1, g with fixed y of x. So this is, um, by definition, so this is xc of xy, but we're thinking of this as y being fixed and x can vary. That's the input. So we can write this as chi, and I'm going to write this by of x where by is empty or contains just one point. In either case, the integral from zero to one of G. So it would be, so technically it's the integral over the set 
over this closed interval, 0 to 1, gyx dx equals 0. And why is that? Well, if um, by is the empty set, then indicator function by of x is constantly 0. So we're integrating a function which is always 0, and so we get 0. If instead gy of x is an indicator function um, where the set in the indicator function is just um, one singular point, then certainly the boundary of this set is itself, and any point set has measure zero because you can just surround it by, you can cover it by an interval of length epsilon for any epsilon. And so it's, um, so it's bound, and, and because it's a single point, its boundary is itself, and you can cover itself, which is its boundary, by a set, uh, by an interval of arbitrarily small length, and so its boundary has measure zero, so you can, so it's integrable. And furthermore, I guess you can skip over that because when you actually compute the um, integral, the, the, the lower sum for any partition is going to be zero because either the, for any interval, either the interval is not going to contain that point in by, in which case um, the, the infimum over that interval is going to be zero, or um, that this interval will, inter this interval in the partition will intersect by will intersect the point in by, but in this case, it must also intersect other points that are not the single point in by. And so the infimum is just you choose one of these other points and it's going to be zero, so the infimum is going to be zero. So any, what that means is that any lower sum is going to be precisely zero for any partition. And then as for the upper sum, um, what you do is you find um, any set in the upper sum Basically, if, if, if for any interval in the in for the upper sum for any interval in the partition again, if the interval does not inter, does not contain that point in by, then the it's the function is zero at, at all points, and so the supremum over all points in that interval is going to be zero. Now, if this interval contains that point in by, then the supremum is going to be one. And so you do get like a positive value for the upper sum. Um, however, if you consider partitions where you cover this point in by by an interval of length epsilon and then just cover the rest of the interval however you want, then the upper sum is going to be, well, you've only got that one set covering that point in by. Um, and so the upper sum, you're just going to take the volume of that set times the maximum value on that interval. Um, and so um, by construction of this partition, the, um, the length of this interval that covers by is going to have length epsilon, and the maximum value is 1, so you get um, total maximum value times volume is epsilon, and this is, um, for any epsilon, you can find a partition that will make this that will satisfy the condition. So if you take the infimum over all partitions, that's going to be less than or equal to the infimum over all of these partitions where you cover that point in by by an interval of length epsilon. And so you're taking the infimum of just epsilon because epsilon is going to be the total, is going to be precisely equal to the sum over all elements in the partition of maximum value on the element times volume of the element. Um, and so the um, infimum over all supremums will be less than or equal to epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero, and so it's going to be zero, and so the integral is going to be zero. Okay, but um, I think that's straightforward enough that you don't really need to go into detail about it, even though I spent a while talking about it. Um, it should be pretty intuitive and straightforward at this point that if you integrate an empty set, you get the integral will be zero. If you integrate um, just a function which is zero everywhere, but one, but takes on a, a, the value of one at a single point, then that integral is going to be zero. So anyways, this integral of gyx is going to be zero. So if we take the integral from zero to one, of the integral from zero to one, of chi c 
xy, dx, dy, and this is going to be the integral from zero to one. Now this integral on the inside here, we well this, okay, so let's write this out again. Zero to one, gy, x, dx, dy. And we just showed that for any y, this integral of gy, x, dx is going to be zero. So we're integrating literally just the zero function dy, and so this is going to be zero. Um, Likewise, um, integral, integral, chi c x y dy dx is going to be, now what we would do is we would integrate over 0 to 1. We would have g fix x and choose y dy dx. And so then this would be 0 to 1. Then you have the integral over 0 to 1, and you'd have chi of bx evaluated at y dy dx. And so you look at this bx, and it's the same thing. Each bx is either going to be empty or contain one point. So integral of chi bx y dy will always be 0. So you're integrating the 0 function with respect to x, and so you get 0. Um, and so, yeah, that's it. Um, if you don't assume integrability of the function, then it can still be the case that integrating with respect to x and y and integrating with respect to y and x, these, these, function, these integrals can result in the same value, um, but just not being equal to the integral of the function because the integral of the function does not exist. And that's it.